Okay, what I'm going to show you today is how to modify this uh, servo tester to making a twist throttle for the bicycle booster pack. Now, what I have here is the this is the standard throttle. So up until now, it's just a single button. You press and hold to boost and release to stop boosting. And um, it's a really simple and effective control, but it does have like a jarring effect. It's just it just throws it out. Uh, so. And I think we can improve it with a little ramp up with, you get with a, a thumb throttle and you can you know, choose half speed if you want to. So this is exactly the servo tester unmodified. Doing exactly what it's supposed to do. Just like that. So uh, now this isn't something that you would want to have on your handlebars, this isn't a very good way to control a uh, booster pack. You wouldn't want to ride your bike and turn this, you, you need to be able to do it. So that's what we're building the frame for. So let's do it. i got my soldering iron here. This is all I did was take the cover off of this thing and uh, so first thing I did is actually when you had it powered up there's three LEDs. They're for different settings. So you're going to make sure that only the first LED is lit up. Boom, you plug it into your ESC with the, uh, this cord is part of your ESC and it has a white, then red, then black cable. And you plug it in in this orientation, just like that. Any other way it won't work, but it won't break it. And you make sure just the, just the first LED is lit up and uh, that's all I wanted to do there. If you press this button, you can give it different settings, but those are those are not desirable for this application. So I'm going to actually desolder that button so I can't accidentally press it in the future. So what I've got here is a little desoldering pump. You press it down and when you press the button it sucks stuff up there. Uh, and I got a hot soldering iron. So and then I'll put this in a little, I got a little 3D printed vise just to make life easy. So there's the button. I've never used one of these before. These are really handy little tools. Just get the stuff melted, throw it over there and suck it up. Boom. You know what? I've got some solder wick in here too. This is pretty handy stuff. Just like pre solder remover, it's like pre, I don't know, it's just basically freaking naked copper. Just get it hot and touch it. Sucks it all up. Super simple. That's a good job. Let's take the solder away. There, cool. I just got the button off. Now I want to take off the, uh, the uh, potentiometer. All I want to do here is I want to desolder it, take it off, Put on an extension cord, three wires, so I can put the just the potentiometer on my handlebars and leave the circuit board packed away inside, you know, somewhere else safe. Because it's too big and clunky to want that whole thing on my on my handlebars. So um, take off the potentiometer. I'm also going to take off this little three three uh, pin connection here and put it in the potentiometer's place, so I can have a place to connect, you know, make a removable connection to my cable. Uh, just kind of reusing it because otherwise it's not going to get used and it'd actually be in the way. I'm going to take a second to remove the uh, 3D printed components of this assembly from the printer. This is my new Witbox 2. Wake it up here. Unlock it. And these are the uh, tools I'm going to use to clean it up. So I have little spring loaded needle nose pliers, a razor blade, a scribe. It's really sharp and pointy. It's almost like an awl would, would do the same thing. A little mini spatula thing. And this razor scissors, which are a really nifty tool for cleaning up prints. Take these over and get them cleaned up. 
Okay, I took a break, traded my beer for some coffee, and did a little soldering to catch up on uh, on this stuff. So now here's here's where I'm at. I've got this long extension wire with a little female uh, pin connector on this side, and then I soldered my um, the leads to the potentiometer that I had removed from this little circuit board earlier. Uh, in its place, I've I had remember I had moved the little three-pin connector to where the to where the um, <clears throat> the potentiometer is, and then I also discovered that it was absolutely necessary to put this green ground wire across the two um, outer legs where the potentiometer is. Apparently, they had used that as a as a ground within the circuit, and it will not work without it. And now I'm going to assemble the uh, the throttle and then put put this whole thing together. So the uh, hot throttle right now, as it is, is three separate pieces. One that clips to your bike frame. It's got this little nifty cove in it, and it, you have this little torsion spring that pops in there. Pop it in there, and this is kind of the tricky part because it needed to be it needs to be pre-torqued. This uh, it needs to be pre-torqued so it's this thumb part is thrown up into the neutral position and doesn't jiggle at all. So uh, this piece has where your thumb goes and the little uh, torsion spring fits in that groove. Just kind of like fight it on there, just like that. And then to finish the assembly, this final piece. I'm going to take the cord and, sli and slide it through the little slot. Oh no, why did I do that? I put a ferrite on this thing. I want to crush that ferrite. I don't want that there. Hopefully I don't crush my wire. Okay. Yes! Okay, moving on on down and then the wires just kind of there we go seat in there and now this has like it moves 270 degrees we're only using like 70 degrees in this case and I don't want to like bottom out at any point you can calibrate the, the ESC to respond to any given range so I'm gonna pick a range that's roughly in the middle so I don't hit any of the sides so that's the middle and what it does is the this black part in the pot presses into the thumb grip and then this other pin is kind of like a press on locator for this half and they just assemble like that firmly gently without breaking it something is stuck I think it's my little that little pin is just kind of reluctant It's definitely what it is. Connect that. Connect. Now these three wires are obviously I put them in the same orientation that the potentiometer was when it was sitting in that spot. Boom. Now it's connected. Just same thing at the end of the long cord. So, boop. Now I have to hold the set button. Turn it on. Let go. Max it out, wait for a beep, flick it, but leave it at zero. I'm going to wait for two beeps. Be all right. Jesus, all right. Unplug it and plug it back in, two beeps, and I'll do that again. It needs that change in resistance to notify it that you've done something, because it's looking for three different positions for this... Uh, Goodness. There, okay, well, let's try that. Woo! Nice! Balls out. Stop. Ramp it up slow. That's it. Final thing is to attach to your bike is a little fastener. Slip it over the handlebars and 
Away you go. I'll add, I don't even know what size this is offhand. It's definitely an inch and a half long. Possibly, you know what, it's number 824. That's what it is. American Threads, so. Oop. Be careful with that, with that guy. There it is. Pot throttle.